When comparing yourself to others turns self-destructive. Comparing ourselves to others online can be destructive. I know a lot about comparing ourselves to others and what that does to us, both the positive and the negative effects, because I've engaged in comparison more times than I can count. In my therapy training, I learned to expand my awareness of my thoughts and feelings, and through that process, I saw much more clearly when and how comparison has enlivened me, and also where it's made me feel awful, jealous, resentful, and, less than. Now, working with professional women to build happier, more rewarding lives and careers, I'm seeing even more clearly how the act of comparing ourselves to others can be motivating, and when it can backfire and become damaging and destructive. As I've talked more about this, some people have said, no, Kathy, you're wrong. Comparison is always very helpful. Sometimes it is. Yet there are many people around us. You know who they are who obsessively engage in comparison, and it makes them sad, sick and disengaged from life and work. Here's a look at my personal take on how to stop obsessively comparing yourself to others and coming up short. And why you need to. The most important thing to understand is that there is a huge difference in energy and outcome between seeing other people's success and using that vision to inspire you, versus beating yourself up mercilessly because you're not where they are. If comparison makes you feel worthless and demoralized, unable to get what you want and deserve, and you resent others for what they have, it's time to stop comparing or shift your approach to it. A feeling and belief that something greater and more rewarding is possible for you because you see it in someone else. 1. A clearer pathway to success because you have a role model who is 10 steps ahead of you doing what you long to and giving you a blueprint for getting there. 2. More positive growth in you because witnessing someone else's expansion reminds you that you have what it takes to to achieve that same outcome or accomplishment, or something greater. I personally know and have worked with many people who are addicted to comparison and to feeling like a loser or a victim. They literally spend hours of their time each week on, LinkedIn, or other social media platforms looking at what other people have created and achieved, and they feel sick and depressed afterwards. It's critical to remember. But so many people forget that social media platforms like, which can be very helpful and enjoyable in many ways, encourage us to put out into the world only the most sanitized, flattering and praiseworthy version of our lives, not the real, raw experiences we're having. Just ask yourself this. How many selfies have you taken of yourself alone or with others that actually never end up being shared? Hundreds, even thousands, I'd guess, because you censor and judge them so harshly that most never see the light of day. Only the most beautiful and flattering make it. This realization is vitally important because it's a damaging mistake to compare the raw reality of your own life with the highly fictionalized, sanitized and, touched up, version of another's. And you never will know. Society trains us to compare ourselves using outer, socially constructed measures of, success, and worthiness including, beauty, age, weight, money, social status, marital status, etc. Understand that there's extreme pressure on us to achieve those measures, but in reality, they're culturally derived ideas that won't necessarily bring you personal joy and fulfillment, given your unique values and wants. Take a look at this powerful, eye-opening TED Talk from Ashton Applewhite on ageism. If you feel continually as if you're less than, ask yourself, how old is this feeling? I'm guessing that for most, the feeling of not good enough began in early childhood, reinforced by authority figures who somehow conveyed that what you did and who you were was not worthy of their unconditional love and positive regard. Thousands up thousands of people in this world have been raised by narcissists and exposure to narcissism can bring about extremely damaging effects. It's projected that at least percent of the US population has borderline personality disorder and or narcissistic personality disorder, and from my research and study, the number who are affected by people with these disorders is vast. Those who experienced emotionally manipulative parents often grow up never feeling good enough, and this feeling of lack of worthiness bleeds into all aspects of their lives, including their careers, businesses, families and relationships. If you are chronically unhappy with your life, comparing yourself to others isn't going to help you. You need another approach that will inspire and motivate you to brave up and make the changes you need to be happier. Begin to gain awareness of each harsh, judgmental thought you have of yourself in comparison to others. Start to see more clearly when and how you judge yourself and how hard you are on yourself. 
Every time you recognize a self-hating thought, say to yourself, there goes one of these judging thoughts. Then release it. Once you've done that for a week, you'll begin to see how tough you are on yourself, and it's time to actively shift your negative thoughts. You need deep commitment and unflagging perseverance, but you can change your thoughts. When you find yourself comparing harshly, stop in your tracks and dig deeper. Try to understand what you feel you are missing, and why. Look at the story you're telling yourself, and rewrite that story. I am on the right track and on my own, unique path to building a life and career I love and am proud of. I am not behind. I'm exactly where I need to be, learning and growing all the time. Remember. But first you have to stop the self-recrimination, and start learning the lessons your life is trying to teach you. How to tell within two minutes. If you're more optimistic, and will live longer, than you think. One way to determine how optimistic you are is by comparing yourself with other people, but that is problematic. Take the famous infamous survey that found over percent of respondents claim to be above average drivers, even though that is mathematically impossible, since all respondents had, at some point in their lives, been injured in car accidents. Findings like that are easy to laugh at, until you realize that we tend to think we re above average at almost everything. A meta-analysis of studies shows people rate themselves as above average in creativity, intelligence, dependability, athleticism, honesty, friendless. Do a survey about almost any trait and the vast majority of us rate ourselves above average. That is why a better way to answer. How optimistic are you? Could be to take the revised life orientation test. First, throw out your answers to questions, and. They re-filler questions. Researchers are such tricksters. 1. Reverse your scores for questions, and. 1. If you strongly agree and gave yourself A for if something can go wrong for me, it will, change the to A. Keep in mind the test creators don't assume a cutoff point for optimistic or pessimistic. They use the scale as a continuous dimension of variability. As with most things, we all exist on some sort of spectrum. If you re-wondering, I scored A, possibly because my age puts me well to the right of the happiness curve. For one thing, your general level of optimism affects your goals. Whether you put time and resources into pursuing a goal, like starting a business, depends on your confidence in achieving that goal. You don't need research to tell you, although such research exists, that you re unlikely to start or stick with a goal if you doubt you ll ever succeed. A global tendency to hold positive expectancies regarding the future is at the core of the concept of optimism. This means that dispositional optimism is likely to impact how hard we strive to achieve goals across a range of life domains. Your level of optimism also affects the level of stress and anxiety you feel. According to the lead author of a study of nearly, women across four decades, optimistic people may also be better at regulating their emotions during stressful situations. Which also makes sense, it is easy to be less concerned in the moment when your default setting is that things usually turn out okay. And then there is this, optimistic people tend to live longer. According to the same longitudinal study, higher optimism was associated with longer lifespan and a greater likelihood of achieving exceptional longevity. All of which sounds great. But if you scored, say, a on the revised life orientation test, you might be thinking, okay, but where is this optimism switch I am supposed to flip? You rewrite for thinking that way, at least in part. Research shows approximately percent of our optimism set point is genetic. But that means percent of your level of optimism can be shaped and learned. In one study, participants who spent five minutes a day for two weeks imagining their best possible self in terms of professional, relationship, and personal goals experienced significant increases in optimism. If visualization isnt your thing, it definitely isnt mine. Try another approach. Spend more time with optimistic people. They tend to be more encouraging. More supportive. A little of their enthusiasm will rub off on you. If spending time in groups isnt your thing, it kind of isnt mine. Then take a step back and think about your mindset. Generally speaking, people fall into two camps. Those with a fixed mindset believe that intelligence, ability, and skill are inborn and relatively fixed. That we are what we were born with. Someone with a fixed mindset might say, I-D-I-D-N. 
T handle that conflict well. I am clearly not a leader. 1. People with a growth mindset believe that intelligence, ability, and skill can be developed through effort. 1. That we are what we work to become. 1. Someone with a growth mindset might say, IDIDN. 1. T handle that conflict well, but next time ILL be more prepared. People who embrace a growth mindset believe success is based on effort and application, not innate talent. That makes them more optimistic. Think of it that way, start to embrace a growth mindset. And you LL have reason to be optimistic. Because who you are, and who you work to become, is absolutely capable of achieving your biggest goals.